until now we've been dealing with force and and Newton's laws and, and essentially one dimension. We've been you know things are going up and down or forward and backwards. And now let's expand that a little bit and and uh, go back to some of the vectors that I introduced when we we did two dimensional projectile motion and and use the vectors to study Newton's laws in two dimensions. So let's say I have the ground. Let me draw the ground in green. This is the ground. I don't want to take up too much space. And let's assume that that is flat. And I have a block on the ground. Well, you know what? Let's let's say this is ice because for now that looks like well, this is ice colored. I don't want to deal with friction. We'll deal with friction soon enough. So let's say say that I'm on a frozen lake that you know has very little friction, and on top of that I have another block of ice. I have another block of ice. So it's ice on ice. So ice on ice has, at least in, in our world that we deal with every day, it's probably, and, and let's say there's even oil on top of the ice. So it's zero friction. And let's say that I'm pulling the ice. And you know, if I told you that I was pulling the ice straight to the right, you know, that would be an easy problem. We could do F equals MA, and you could figure out, you know, if I told you it's force, we could figure out how fast I'm accelerating the block. But what I'm going to do is something that's maybe a little bit more realistic. Let's say I have a, something hooked into the ice. And then I have a string. And then that string is actually going up at an angle. And then I'm holding, that's, this is me. Uh, well, you get the point. So and this is, this is realistic, because if I was pulling a block of ice, it's unlikely that I'd be pulling it straight horizontally. I'd probably, the, the string would be lifted a little bit. And let's say that the angle that the string makes with the horizontal, so the angle with the horizontal, so this is the horizontal, right? The angle that string, let me switch colors, because not everything is ice. The angle it makes is 30 degrees. Let's say that the block of ice is, I don't know, let's say, let's say it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavy block of ice. Let's say it's 50 kilograms. 50 kilograms. That's, that's heavy. That's over 100 pounds. So 50 kilogram block of ice. And let's say that I'm pulling with a force. So let me draw my force, and this will be a vector. So I'm pulling in this direction, right? I'm pulling in this direction. And it's a vector, right? Because a force is, is, has both a, a magnitude and a direction. That's what makes it a vector. And so this is the direction we said, you know, 30 degrees uh, up from the horizontal. And let's say I'm the force that I'm pulling on the string, and this, this could also be considered the tension on the string. And we're going to be doing some tension problems in a few videos. But the tension on the string, or the force that I'm pulling on it with, let's say that that is, oh, I don't know. Let me make up a number. Um, hmm. Let me say 10, 10 newtons. That might be a realistic number. I'm assuming that, I, that well, I think I'm stronger than that. But let's just say it's 10 newtons. So how fast is this block going to accelerate? And so the question is, well, one, what direction will it accelerate in? and 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 well, and what direction might will it not accelerate in? But let's just figure this out. So if we want to figure out how fast will it accelerate to the to the right or in the direction, not that I'm pulling, because I'm pulling upwards, right? And as you could probably guess, 10 newtons isn't going to pull a 50 kilogram block upwards. But let's say I, I want to pull it. I want to figure out its speed to the right. So what we do is we break up this force vector into its two components, into its upward component and into its horizontal component. And this is just like what we did with the velocity vectors when we did two-dimensional pro projectile motion. And the way I think about it is I think of it like a, the size of a, of a rectangle or the size of a triangle. If you just, no, let me pick a better color. So its horizontal magnitude is just going to be kind of, if, if you imagined this vector in an xy coordinate plane, it would be essentially the x, the, the magnitude, the, the x value. If this was the point, if this was the, you know, if this was 10 away at a 30 degree angle, this value right here would be its x value, and then the y value would be this. And another way you could think about it, I could have drawn this y value here, and they would make up a triangle, right? Actually, that might be clear. Let me draw it here. I could have drawn the y value here and make up a triangle. You could think of it either way. Sometimes you'll see someone, you know, they'll have all the vectors starting at the same point, and sometimes you'll see this this vector pushed over here so that you can kind of see that it forms a triangle. So let's figure out what the sides of this triangle are. So we want to figure out it's the horizontal component. 
So the horizontal component is this side. Right? And let's go back to our trigonometry. So Sokatoa. Sokatoa. We know what? This we know this ten newtons. This the length of this vector is ten newtons or the magnitude. And that's the hypotenuse of this triangle. And we know and what we want to figure out is the adjacent side, right? Because we have this angle. So we know the hypotenuse, we want to figure out the adjacent. What do we use? We use cosine, ka. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that tells us that the cosine of 30 degrees, the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent side. So let's say the, that's the force in the x direction. That's the adjacent side. Force sub x over the hypotenuse over 10. We can multiply both sides by 10, and you get the force in the x direction is equal to 10 cosine of 30 degrees. And let's figure out what that is. Well, if you know your 30, 60, 90 triangles, you could, you could figure it out. Um, it's actually square root of 3 over 2 cosine of 30 degrees. But I'll take out the, the handy calculator. Just Oh, that's not the right calculator. I wanted to use the other one. Actually, let's just stick, stick, stick around with this one. Because we know this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if this is, you could use a calculator to figure it out, but I, I don't have the calculator handy just now, so we'll do it by hand. So the cosine of 30 degrees is, if you haven't memorized it, it's square root of 3 over 2. So the force in the x direction is equal to 10 times the square root of 3 over 2, which equals 5 square roots of 3, right? 10 divided by 2 force in the x direction, newtons. So now we can figure out its acceleration in the x direction. Because force in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. So if we divide both sides by the mass, we get the acceleration in the x direction is the force in the x direction divided by the mass. And that equals 5 square root of 3 newtons, 5 square root of 3 newtons, over 50 kilograms, over 50 kilograms. And we know that the units are, units are right, because we're dealing with um, newtons, and you know, not kilonewtons or something. And we're dealing with kilograms, not grams or decagrams or something. And so this turns into, let's see, 1 over 10, right? So it's square root of 3 over 10 meters per second squared is the acceleration in the rightward direction or in the x direction, we could say. And so what, what, what else is going to happen to the block? I mean, as, as we see, you know, I, I'm pulling at an angle. So there is an upward component. So am I lifting the block somehow? Am I picking up this portion of the block? Well, let's figure that out. Let me, let me see if I can, oh, no, no, no. Let me see if I can clean this up a little bit. OK, that should give me enough space. OK. so. Similarly, we want to figure out the length of this vector right here, right? The the force in the y direction, and we could use the same logic. So, that's going to be the sine, right? The sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse is equal to force in the y direction divided by the hypotenuse 10. So the force in the y direction is equal to 10 sine of 30. Sine of 30 degrees is easier. That's one half. If, in case you haven't memorized it. So that's 1 half, this is 1 half, times 10. So the force in the y direction is equal to 10 newtons. So I'm essentially pulling up on this point in the block of ice at 10 newtons. So is, is the block of ice going to move up? Think about it a little bit. Maybe you want to pause it. Well, what's the force on the, in the downward direction at that of, of the block of ice? Well, the force in the block. Downward direction. And actually, I should probably assume that I'm somehow hooked to the middle of it. And maybe you know this is the center mass, but I don't want to get too technical right now. But as a whole, because maybe I could tilt it a little bit, I might be able to tilt it, but I won't get it, go into that much. But the force downward. What's the force of gravity on this block? Well, it's 50 kilograms times 9.8, or roughly 10 meters per second squared, right? So the downward force of gravity is something like 500 newtons. 500 newtons, gravity's pushing down. And my upward force is only, oh, I know it's 5 newtons, sorry. My upward force is only 5 newtons. 
So still, the net down, the net force on this block in the y direction is still downwards, and it's really the ice is supporting most of the weight of this block. And what I'm doing is really, you know, maybe I'm lessening that already small friction a little bit. So I'm really not moving the block at all in the up direction. I'm just pulling it in the x direction, and I'm running out of time. So I'll see y'all in the next video.